...to Iraqi army positions in Kuwait and southern Iraq in preparation for the ground war. RAF tornadoes and American fighters have been targeting Saddam Hussein's best trained and best equipped soldiers, the Republican Guard, attacking ammunition and fuel dumps as part of the continuing campaign to weaken their fighting capability. American pilots said there were more fires below than they could count. Uh, yesterday, an air crew reported that uh, following an attack on Republican guards, uh, uh, they saw a tremendous fireball. That in itself isn't uh, uh, a whole lot significant uh, until you realize that the air crew that made that report was over 200 miles away from the, uh, the area that was attacked. Allied planes are still searching for the remaining mobile Scud launchers, as well as targeting other Iraqi weapons. This morning, RAF Jaguars successfully bombed an Iraqi silkworm missile site in Kuwait. These Chinese-built anti-shipping missiles would have posed a threat to Allied vessels in the Gulf during any amphibious assault on the Kuwaiti coast. Allied commanders believe that by the time the ground war does commence, Iraqi troops will have become so demoralized by the constant aerial bombardment, as well as their lack of food and supplies, that thousands will surrender. The British, like the Americans, are making elaborate preparations to deal with them. Uh, I think that we are anticipating that huge numbers, once uh, operations start, or maybe even before, uh, are, are, uh, are going to give themselves up fairly quickly. And that's why we've put so many people into it. I mean, the three battalions that we've put forward actually number over 1,800 men. And so they're going to be able to deal with a large number of casualties uh, and POWs. British and American commanders are continuing to give a positive assessment of the war so far, based on the overwhelming aerial superiority that the Allies have achieved. And they say the relentless pounding of the Iraqi troops from the air will continue until the time is right for the ground forces to move. Iraqi television released these pictures. They say that they show members of Iraq's large Christian minority at a mass in the country's oldest church. The Iraqis say that St. Thomas's in the northern town of Mosul was damaged in Allied air raids. The Iraqis also released these scenes. They say that they show victims of Allied bombing in Kirkuk, a town 200 miles north of Baghdad. It's not possible to establish the truth of that. The Iraqis say there have been 113 air raids today against military targets and what it calls residential areas. Five Allied planes and missiles, it said, were shot down. Again, these figures cannot be checked independently, only compared with Allied accounts. Most foreign journalists have had to leave Iraq. Those still there are supervised closely by Iraqi officials. CNN's Peter Arnett was taken to the town of Al-Dur, north of Baghdad. Uh, the southwestern part of the town was hit the hardest. I counted 23 homes totally destroyed. They were flattened as though shaken by a mighty earthquake. In the yards of some homes and in the streets, I counted 23 bomb craters. One outside the little mosque was 30 feet deep and about 60 feet across. By limiting the flow of information, the Iraqis are trying to manipulate the Western media's coverage of the war. They're likely to release more pictures of wreckage and of casualties.